Hello ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to record a quick updated video on how to set up Apache Cassandra on Windows 10. And uh, this is because uh, some of the things have changed since my last version of the video. There's a few more hurdles that I've had to go through in order to get it to run correctly. Uh, so I thought I would pass that along with a new setup video. Uh, but you can see here, I've got a fresh install of Windows. There's nothing um, particularly set up here. The only thing I've done is I've... Um, downloaded the files already, but I'm going to show you where to go to download those as well. Um, so this is Apache Cassandra's website. You can go to cassandra.apache.org. And uh, here, what we're going to do is first check out the documentation. Um, now this is before version four has been released. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and click on the right here, um, or actually zoom out just a little bit and uh, click on uh, the documentation here. And this is, uh, so the release candidate of version four is out. This version doesn't have the uh, PowerShell commands to run on Windows, so you can't quite use that yet, but if version four is out, you might wanna try that instead of version three. Um, but we're gonna check out the version three documentation uh, currently. So version four will be better. Uh, it uses a newer version of uh, Java, and it also uh, works with Python 3 instead of Python 2, um, but for now we're kind of stuck with the with the old version of Java and Python. So here's um, the documentation. I just changed the number here uh, to 3.11.11, um, and I'm going to click on Getting Started, and then clicking on Install Cassandra. And you can see here it's requiring uh, either the Oracle's Java uh, 8 or the OpenJDK 8 version. Um, and you can check that with Java dash version and also um, Python 2.7 if you need the command line uh, query language shell. And so uh, that's the command uh, Cassandra query language shell is what that stands for. Um, and so if you don't need that uh, on this computer that you're running, um, then you can probably switch, just use Python 3. But um, I'm going to use Python 2 uh, so that we can use that on the same computer. Um, and you can see if I open up the command prompt, um, I'm going to go down here to Windows System and Command Prompt, or you can just search for Command Prompt. Um, right now, if I type in Java-version, uh, it's not recognized. Also, if I type in Python-version, um, that command also returns nothing because I don't have a version of Python set up yet. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get those set up. So if you go to the Python website, python.org, um, you can click download, um, and you might be tempted to click on this, but no, that's version three, so it, uh, we can't do that yet. So click on Windows here, and uh, then scroll down and click on uh, the latest version of Python 2. And then uh, because I'm using the 64-bit version of Windows, um, I'm going to download this version here, um, the Windows um, XA664 MSI installer. And uh, if you click on that, that will download. I've already downloaded it. And you can check your version of Windows to see if it's 64-bit um, or if you need this version, the XA6 version. By um, In the search here, you can type in about, about your PC. And uh, you can see here system type, 64-bit uh, operating system. Um, so after you've downloaded Python, uh, then you can uh, either download uh, Oracle's Java Development Kit uh, or do the Adopt Open Java Development Kit. Uh, what I like about Open Java Development Kit, other than it being open source, is uh, you also don't need to create an account um, with Oracle. So Oracle requires you to create an account in order to download the file, which you can do. It's free and um, there's no problem there, but um, this is a little easier. So I'm going to click on OpenJDK 8. Um, and then click on uh, either of these, but I'm gonna choose hotspot, um, either one should work, and then click latest release, just click that, and it should download. Um, and then um, another thing we can do is to go ahead and download Cassandra. So under Cassandra's website, I'm gonna click downloads here, and we'll click on the latest stable release. Again, as the time of recording, it's uh, Cassandra 3, uh, not Cassandra 4, uh, because that's still a release candidate. So I'm going to click on 3.11.10, and then I'm going to click on this link here to download it. Notice that this is a tar gun zip. And so what that means is it's a, a compressed file that we can't, uh, by default, extract with Windows built-in tools. Um, so after downloading that, uh, we'll need something like 7-Zip. 7-Zip is a great option. And so if you go to 7-Zip.org, um, you can click download here for the 64-bit version if you have that version of Windows. Otherwise, you can use the 32-bit version here. Um, so click on that and download that. Um, now, I've got all those files already installed or already downloaded um, in my downloads folder. So here's my downloads folder, and we can just go ahead and install each of them. So I'm going to first install Python. And uh, I'll do install it for all users. And I'll keep the default path. And here, one thing that's helpful to check is add python.exe to path. Uh, so I'm going to install that as well. We can change that later, but it's helpful to do it here. It's a little easier. I'll show you how to do both ways. 
This installation doesn't take too long. We'll let that go ahead and finish real quick. Okay, and uh, so that's finished. So we'll press finish. And uh, then we'll go ahead and install the OpenJDK or the other version of the Java Development Kit if you got it from Orgle. And I'm gonna accept the agreement here. And then again here, uh, we wanna make sure that add to path is selected. And also we wanna set this Java home variable. We can again do this later, uh, but it's easier to just let the installer do it for us. Click install. And then uh, finished. And um, now uh, what we can do is double check that those environment variables are set up, or if you haven't, uh, didn't check the box or had these previously installed, uh, you can do it here. So in the search box here, I'm gonna type in environment. And uh, you can see it's popping up already with edit system environment variables. So I'm gonna click on that. It's an easy way to do it. And then click on environment variables here at the bottom. And uh, there's two sets. Uh, one is the user variables. These are just for your logged in user, uh, just you, um, not other users on this computer. And uh, system variables apply to all users. Um, so uh, we can see that there's a Java home added for all users, and that's good. Uh, if not, we could click new and add it. Um, and then here on path, I'm gonna double click on the path here. You can see uh, here's a link to the bin folder inside our Java development kit uh, inside the path variable. And also we got these two uh, Python paths here as well um, added already. And if they're not here, you can click new and then uh, click browse and browse to those locations on your computer. Um, so for example, we know we install Python on the C drive and uh, there it is. Um, so we could click on this and add it. Um, obviously, I don't need to do that um, just because those are already set. Um, okay, so next is to uh, extract Cassandra. So here it is. Um, and again, we need some kind of tool to extract that. So I'm going to go ahead and install 7-zip really quickly. This installs very quickly. And uh, then we have we can right click on our thing here and click 7-zip, the new thing. And I'm just going to click extract here. That'll extract just the tar file, which is also... Um, needs to be extracted. So we'll right click on this tar file and click 7-zip. And you can just extract it here if you want to. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and move it to the C drive. So I'm gonna click extract files. And then I'm gonna change this path here uh, to be C colon slash. I like to put Cassandra right in the root of my uh, path. You could put it elsewhere, but it's a good idea to put it in a path that doesn't have spaces in it. And then I'm gonna uncheck this here. Um, it doesn't need to create um, this location here to uh, put it. Uh, the tar file already has a folder inside of it. Um, I'm gonna hit okay. And this is gonna extract really quickly into the C drive. Now we can click on this PC and go to the C drive. And you see there's a folder here for Apache Cassandra. Um, and if I click on that, it has a bin folder and a config folder. The bin is where um, you'll run your commands and config uh, configures how it's set up. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna just try it. It probably won't work, um, but we can make some changes and just see what happens. So I'm gonna open up the command prompt again um, and uh, go ahead and uh, maximize it. And uh, we'll change directories into C slash um, Apache Cassandra slash bin. And so once we're in there, we're going to type Cassandra and just see what happens. Uh, see, see if it uh, is able to run successfully. We'll probably still have to make a few changes. We'll see a warning and uh, it notice it, it exited. So if it exits, uh, then it's not working. It should remain running here in the command line. So we shouldn't get another prompt here. And there's some errors um, that we can fix. Um, now, one thing uh, at the very top here um, is this warning PowerShell um, execution unavailable. So if you see the same error, we'll want to run this command. Um, so uh, we'll want to set up the PowerShell. So we'll um, want to make it unrestricted to have it be able to run in enhanced mode. Uh, so I'm going to right click on the Windows thing here, uh, the Windows button, and click uh, Windows PowerShell Admin and accept that. And then here, uh, what you can do is you can actually see your current, see current policies and uh, change those. Um, so I'm going to first get, this is like a bonus, um, we're going to go ahead and get the uh, execution policy um, and just pass it the command list so we can see it. And you notice in my machine, as it came by default, none of them are defined, but we want to change the local uh, machine here to um, be allowed. And so what we can do is set execution policy um, unrestricted. And this is the same as the warning is giving us in the previous uh, command. And I'm going to hit yes here uh, to let that happen. And then uh, if we go ahead and list it again, you can see uh, the local machine now has it listed as unrestricted. Um, and again, this command here is uh, just the output uh, that's shown right here. Um, and uh, the other thing I'm getting 
uh, is an error here related to can't find uh, dependencies and it's pointing to this uh, particular DLL here unsatisfied linking error it says um, for the and if you see this um, what I've discovered is it has to do with a missing um, C++ visual C++ 2010 um, redistributable library um, so we can go ahead and install that as well um, what I've done is I've already gone to the download link in edge um, so you can go to this link I'll put this link in the description if you have the same error and uh, we'll go down here and click on the download button and then because I'm using the 64-bit version of um, Java I'm gonna click on this uh, with the x64 at the end and click next and let that download and it's, and then we'll click on it to install it and uh, it takes uh, not very long I've read um, and I don't need to send any information to Microsoft for this to work And uh, we can go ahead and exit out. Uh, now, I'm going to clear the screen. So on the command line, if you ever want to clear the screen, you type just CLS. And uh, we'll try running Cassandra one more time. Notice it says uh, running an enhanced script, start script. And um, now it's showing an access violation. And um, notice it's saying here um, the Cigar library. And... Um, we can, uh, this is something that um, I've run into as well. Um, so what we can do is, um, I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this, and we can change the Cassandra configuration to basically not use that, uh, not look up that library. So I'm gonna go to the, um, again, this is C, Apache Cassandra, um, and then I'm gonna click on Config, and uh, we'll go down to um, this file here. It's a PowerShell file. In fact, if I, if I show you, um, if I go to Options here and View, and then click, um, uncheck this hide extensions of known file types, um, then we can see it's got a PS1 here at the, as the extension. So I'm gonna um, open this, and we can jump down to line uh, 357 in the current version. You can press Control G uh, to jump to a particular line number in most editors, um, including the standard notepad. Um, and so here it is, um, the line here, um, and notice it's, it's pointing to um, adding cigar environment. Um, and you can Google this if you want to know more information about that, but we can just comment that out. That's not necessary uh, for Cassandra to run. Um, and so I'm just going to comment that out for now while it's not working. Um, add a pound sign at the front, and then I hit Control S to save, or you can go to File and cl click Save as well. And I'm going to exit out of that. I'm going to open up the command prompt again, and we're going to navigate back to um, the Apache Cassandra bin file. And um, go ahead and maximize this. Um, and then we can type in Cassandra and see if it runs now. Okay, it looks like it's uh, didn't exit. Uh, it looks like it's running. Um, we can open up another command prompt and test that out. Um, so I'm gonna just right click here and click on another command prompt so we can pop that up. I'm gonna navigate back to uh, C slash Apache Cassandra slash bin and I'm going to type node tools, node tools, node tool, um, and then status. And this can give us the status of uh, the current running instance. So um, here you can see um, that the status um, of our one node um, is up and running. We can see the host ID and, and, and where it's running. So if you don't see that, that means it's probably still not working. Another thing we can test is the Cassandra query language shell. Um, so that's the um, Cassandra query language shell, that's how the abbreviation for it. Uh, type that and launch it. And since we installed Python 2, this should work. Um, and so, yeah, we should be able to type in commands here um, to access our database, um, as you can see here. Notice it's saying uh, this warning that's missing this dependency, uh, PyRelide. So we can go ahead and install that if we want. I'm gonna type uh, quit and then colon to exit out of this. And uh, we can do a pip install uh, PyRelide let that install really quickly and it's telling us that we shouldn't be using python 2.7 i agree um, but we need it for now um, it's also saying that it recommends updating pip so we might as well do that um, as well with this command here that it provides for us and uh, now that that's set up we can type in uh, cls to clear the screen and uh, try the cassandra query language shell one more time cqlsh 
and notice uh, that warning's gone, so it seems to be working. Uh, we still have this warning about uh, code pages must be set. Um, I don't think that's a, a, a big deal uh, for us, um, but if you'd like to look into that uh, warning, you can also address that as well. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention, we didn't run into it in this time in the video, but I've have in the past, depending on how much memory is in my system. Um, so if you have a lot of memory on your computer, uh, you might run into a problem where um, the uh, uh, Java development or the Java runtime can't load as much as it's tr as Cassandra's trying to do. Um, and so one fix for that again is to go to the C Apache config and then, but open here, the JVM dot options. Uh, so I'm going to double click on that. Uh, we'll go ahead and open it with notepad since that's all I have uh, on this computer. And uh, if you scroll down this file towards the bottom, there's a section called heap settings. Yeah, so heap settings here. Um, and it talks about here a formula for setting how big the heap should be. And notice it sets it to be the maximum of one half the RAM um, or um, uh, the minimum of uh, one half the RAM or uh, um, at least uh, this. So, so it'll be at least one gigabyte and the minimum will be um, a fourth of the RAM or at most um, eight gigabytes. Um, and so if that ends up being too big, you can fix that by uncommenting these. So I'm just going to remove the pound signs here. Um, and this forces basically the maximum and the minimum size uh, to be four gigabytes both. So basically you'll have a heap of four gigabytes and you could change this. You could change it to uh, one gigabyte um, or you could change this uh, G here to be an MB for megabytes. Um, but uncommenting these will set a specific haps um, heap size. Um, so if you run into that problem, um, you can adjust those options here. Um, and then, um, and then, uh, that should work, um, and fix that problem. Anyway, so you can see, uh, there's quite a few hoops to run in, uh, to jump through, uh, to get Apache Cassandra running. Uh, and it might be a little easier in Linux. One last thing that I want to set up is, um, I don't want to have to go to this path in order to run Cassandra. So this is an optional thing. Uh, if you just want to go to this path every time, that's fine, but let's add, uh, this location to, um, our path in windows. So that way we can access it from anywhere in the command line. So I'm going to go ahead and exit, uh, Cassandra from now. I'm hitting, just hit control C there, uh, to exit out. Um, let's go back to the environment variables. So I'm going to search again here, um, edit system environment variables and uh, go down to environment variables here. Um, and we can do this in the system path or uh, the user path. Um, and uh, again, the system path is for everybody. I'm going to click on new and uh, browse and we'll go ahead and browse to where Cassandra was installed. So that would be in the C drive and then Apache Cassandra and then inside bin. That'll be what we want to add. Um, and then we'll hit okay here. And uh, I can't click on the, uh, um, okay button here, but, uh, let's see. Okay. Got through it. Uh, cause it was a little off the screen cause I'm so zoomed in here and we hit okay. Oh, now, uh, so now I can open up the command prompt again. And then from anywhere, including here, I should be able to type in Cassandra, uh, Cassandra and, uh, have it launch. Sure enough, there it goes. So that makes it a little easier. Hope this video was helpful. Um, uh, as always, you're probably going to run into a few problems that I didn't, uh, but I tried to cover as many as I could, uh, given a, a fresh install of Windows with nothing else on it. Um, and uh, hopefully it's a little easier when version four is fully released. Um, so if you're watching this video at that time, I definitely recommend trying uh, Cassandra four instead of Cassandra three. Or if you want to jump back to uh, my previous video on setting up with version um, 3.11.4 instead of 3.11.11, um, then you can try that as well. Um, but anyways, um, hopefully you can figure it out. Um, and if not, uh, leave a comment, uh, or, uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.